Welcome back, Hocaholics, to another episode of Foul Mouth Fishing. I think we have a problem. But coming right up... I think I got a solution to this problem. We got ourselves a new delivery in the mail. Let's try to fix all this jumble of tackle with a brand new organization system by a pretty uh, sweet company. <laughs> Stay tuned. Be ready. fishing all you hookaholics so I hope this will be a little bit of an informative thing um, it is fall and at the end of each year what I try to do is I do my my yearly maintenance of things you know I'll break down my reels uh, break down my rods clean everything up uh, check all the guides uh, yet again uh, make sure everything's lubed greased oiled but I also do something that you know for the transition from my summer spring baits to my fall winter baits <clears throat> I reorganize my tackle consolidate and condense. Everybody has their like day box that they take out, especially as a kayak angler or you know if you're not a, a glory boat angler you don't have that big well of tackle storage on your boat. You know, you've got a small little milk crate in the back or just what's underneath the seat of your you know your, your lay down kayak. Um, you gotta consolidate your tackle and there comes a point where you just get way too much tackle. So I came across the company, it's been out for I think about a year, year and a half. Um, and uh, I saw it and I decided to pick one up. So, like many of you, you all always have, you know, different storage items. I mean, this is what I use my spinner baits. I keep in this little plano here. Um, obviously, when you buy tackle bags, you get, you know, proprietary uh, tackle storage boxes. These have their drawbacks. They have their pluses and their minuses. Um, one being if you've got a whole lot of baits and you're trying to store them in one box, um, one of two things happen. One, you have a whole bunch of baits that are literally just laying on top of each other, rattling around, getting chipped. And if you have custom painted jerk baits, custom painted crank baits, um, you know, you're, you're looking at a lot of money that you've invested on something that's just getting torn up. Then you have new tackle companies that come out. you got Groove Systems with their um, their little, uh, you know, rubberized system that kind of holds everything in place. They're a little bit better. Things don't rattle around as much. Um, but you get into situations where how many of these are you going to have on your kayak or your boat? And then when you have a bait that's slightly larger than you expect and you set it in the box on the lake and now your lid doesn't close because it's only a magnetic attachment, right? It's not exactly waterproof. It doesn't have a neoprene seal. Um, it's an excellent design. It's definitely helpful uh, for, you know, if you've got just what you want to run with that day, keeping this little box, putting in the, the lipless cranks like I do on this, the rattle traps, um, and then running and gunning with that, that's a good way. Um, obviously, you want waterproof, so you can go with things like this. I keep all my little small hooks in this little Plano. Um, it's got the three locks got the neoprene attachment uh, or neoprene seal around the outside so all my you know my hardware in here is going to stay safe it's going to stay watertight um, but then you have issues where on certain boxes not so much this Plano but on certain brands it might be watertight but these little dividers end up being just a gap below the lid seal and you take around in your small hook um, they just transfer I mean you can see right there I've got a small hook that's coming from this section into this section, and I don't know how many countless times I've literally taken hooks and reset them so my ones are in ones, and my size 16s are in size 16s, and my two aughts are in two aught, not in four aught, and you know, it just it becomes a, a headache. Um, then again, you know, you have the issue, same thing here. Things will rattle and exchange. The lids can't seal very tight, um, and you get 
warping, as well as scratching and fading. You can eventually lose the clarity, so you don't know what your baits are inside in the end. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of things that can actually hinder your progress on, on the lake. Plano came out with their Edge Series. Huge advancement. Um, there's basically the this Plano Edge uh, from Plano and the Bass Mafia systems are the two that I personally like the best. Um, Plano Edge, it's a very small profile, very thin and sleek. There is the problem where Plano's 3700 is not actually a 3700. I don't care what anybody says. Um, the footprint on this is slightly larger than traditional 3700 size uh, boxes by the same manufacturer because they've devised this. Because I'll line this up. So you can see, lined up back to back, because they designed this one single hand use clasp to open it, the bulbous rounding of this edge actually sits this out just a hair, about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, uh, beyond um, your other standard tackle boxes. So if you built something custom, if you're a Tiny Boat Nation guy, and you build a custom boat, and you put you know, your storage down to make your, your casting platform as low profile as possible, and you just had enough room to clear a 3700, uh, with your padding or whatever, so that your shit's not ba banging around in the, uh, you know, as you're going across the lake, um, this is going to be that little bit of tolerance is going to be gone, uh, just for this. Um, other than that, these are excellent. Uh, a lot of people do complain that each individual storage compartment inside the tackle box has its own lid that you then, again, have to open up in order to get to your tackle. Uh, I don't mind that so much because... I like the idea of purchasing these uh, separately or getting other Plano Edge boxes and being able to just keep these on a shelf and day by day just swap out as I go. The variety of setups and designs that you have in here, it's a good variety. I mean, you have larger, longer segments with, uh, you know, uh, obscured uh, lids that you can write on, clear see-through lids in the same size and larger as well as smaller. Um, there's not a huge variety of, of s designs that you can come up with on the fly, um, but it is good. And again, like I say, the Bass Mafia, this is, I've said this before, if you have a Laztec Bates, a Laztec has that agent in the plastic that makes it absolutely, you know, indestructible as far as the, uh, the variety of, uh, or the, the ability to stretch and not be broken. If you need a storage box because you don't want to keep them in a thousand um, bags, Bass Mafia, because of the ABS plastic, the high strength, thick walled plastic that they make these boxes out of, I've had them in here. The dividers don't warp. The plastic itself is thick and sturdy. The lid doesn't have any adverse effects. The plastics don't gas off and cause the issue with other, um, you know, Aztecs within the same box. They're all the same basic make. Now, I've even mixed the, uh, you know, the Z-Man's Aztec with the 10,000 Fishes um, Stretch X, as they call theirs, their version of it, um, and other brands that have that same basic super stretchy plastic configuration, and even having them together in the same box they don't adversely affect one another. So that is a, that's a plus because these, like I said, these dividers are pretty sturdy and they're extremely thick. So if you're looking for a storage unit specifically for just your Elastec to consolidate all those bags of different shape baits, different style and profile into one box that you can just throw and have all your Elastecs in one, one you know, easy to reach, easy to get place, Bass Mafia is one to look at. And lastly, I've even broken down for my larger things, my big floats when I'm catfishing or uh, my heavier weights when I'm saltwater fishing. You know, I keep my, I keep my little three ounce uh, catfishing and carp, uh, you know, my, my no rolls, my little pyramids, a little three ounce pyramid, um, you know, six ounce little sinkers when I'm going out on the beach and my floats and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. 
And I actually kept that in a Harbor Freight storage box. Again, I like this one only because it has the carry handle, and when I'm carrying so much weight, um, you know, it's, it's convenient to have that nice little soft grip. Plastic on this is garbage. It's cheap. It's a Harbor Freight, you know, thing. The bin variety on this is what truly impressed me. From something from, from Harbor Freight, you can see it has these large divided bins that slide in, and you have these individual little bins that slide in, and then you have these slightly medium bins. So you have a variety of sizes of bins in this Harbor Freight tackle, or Harbor Freight storage unit um, that I use for tackle, um, that gave me the ability to create my own custom uh, layout for smaller units, larger you know, larger uh, floats, uh, larger sinkers, smaller floats on the other side, and it gave me custom ability um, and versatility that is a little bit rare in the tackle space when 99.9% .9 of tackle boxes and storage units, all you have is the ability to slide left and right with these dividers. You know, you can pull it out, slide over to right, slide to left, what have you. Um, that doesn't give you full versatility. Now, I've mentioned in the past, you know, I was thinking about a system where the sides had so many individual grooves that you could literally limit the space between your dividers down to a nuance all the way up to a full, you know, 3,700 foot wide. Uh, especially for guys who musky hunt, you know, musky fishermen, where we have baits that, you know, um, double tens and, and big, big, long bucktails and long baits. Uh, there is a space and a specific set of storage uh, units that come out specifically for those anglers. Um, but a versatile you know, angling system or versatile uh, storage system that can translate over to bass fishermen, pan fishermen, it's not so common. Until I ran into something that is the best of all worlds. It is a bass mafia meets a Plano Edge meets that harbor freight system. And that is this. It is called the Busby. Busby is a relatively new system. Came out, I think, a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and the versatility here and the durability amazes me. So I only recently heard of them. I know there's a few videos out there. In fact, you know, the, the company themselves put out a few. Um, I'll run through really quick because I'm, you know, I'm not one to sit there and just read the box and read the information. I want to give you insight. So, what this system is, and they give you a bunch of crappy stickers that I'm really not greatly interested in. I love stickers, but decals are decals. So, that's cardboard. The Busby system is a platform, just like that Harbor Freight, of these individually designed cubes or, or segmented sections, little boxes, that are integrated into the frame of the actual Busby 3700 box. So here's how it rolls out. You have a 3700 series size box, a true 3700. I'll get you the Plano Edge again. So we'll set these up edge to edge, and you can see there is just that little bit, I'm going to keep them flush, just that little bit of difference there, where the Plano edge, this rounded edge, is just beyond where a 3700 would be. But, you have the same see-through as a Plano edge, you're going to have the box system like the Plano edge, and more versatile, because it's going to be like that Harbor Freight box in a variety of, sh of sizes. Um, you have a uh, light grade ballistics um, plastic, which is, you know, it's, it's uh, interesting because this is protected with a UV, a UV protectant embedded in the plastic, so it shouldn't fade over time. It's a light ballistics um, plastic, so it shouldn't crack too easily. If you like Lexon polycarbonate, you know, that's what this is. This is a, this is a Lexan polycarbonate uh, plastic. Um, the system has this honeycomb, because it's Busby, so that's their gimmick, beehives. 
Um, but they have these honeycomb series of, pla of, of embedments inside the, in the base here. You can see them up close and, and bright. And what that allows you to do is to take one of these little individual Busby... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go to get one that's already there. has the boxes in Because I got, I got their new trial case set up. It's a big box with a lot in it. This is their, they call this the Colony 28. So, here we go. As you can see, it has all of these little individual dividers. You have stainless steel hinges, or hinge pins, stainless steel uh, latch, latching system, so it's salt water ready. And you have, like I said, these individual bins. And the, the beauty, like I said, of the Harbor Freight, you have these bins in different size combinations, and it allows you the versatility to move things around. You just slide them over, slap them into a new position, uh, move whatever you want, wherever you want, and exchange boxes between between the different colony setups, you know. So you can do a lot of really interesting versatile designs. Of course, there are limitations. You know, you, you don't want to have an open L. But just that quick, you can go back in the video and see I've, I've just completely changed the layout in a couple of seconds between the standard layout that they come with. Open this one up. So you go back to the standard. A little before and after. So you have your standard layout where you have, you know, a large opening, a third of the way up, small, long across the bottom. And then just that quickly, we change it out to this layout. So, comparatively, you can place all full length, uh, what do they call these? I think they call these, um, this is a 2x2, two two. this I think is a 1x3 and a 1x4. So, you could do an entire box of just 1x4 slats all the way across. You could do an entire box of just these little 1x1 one one cubes for your terminal tackle, your weights, your tungs tungsten, or what have you. The walls on this, the plastic is way thicker than you'd have in any other Plano as far as the dividers, um, which is a good and a bad. It's bad because it, it limits the amount of space that you have because every one of these walls butting up, especially with these lips butting up against each other, you can see there is that space there between them um, as they're butted inside the box. So that gap is taking away room that could probably be used for a more, you know, a larger opening, a more more capable void for storage. That being said, these things are way more durable. There are videos of people taking their dualies and driving over top of these without damaging them. As I said, it's a light ballistics um, um, polycarbonate uh, lid. Uh, Busby themselves took a birdshot shotgun shell and uh, shot their Busby pellet marks, but it didn't go through the plastic. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you taking out your 38 or whatever and shooting it. I don't know what this would be rated to, and I'd hate to see it, you know, ricochet or, or splinter off and, and hurt somebody. But the fact that they took, you know, a little shotgun pellet and, and hit it a couple of times with some, some, uh, with some shells was interesting, um, and that shows, you know, it speaks to durability. The other great thing, again, it does have the neoprene seal, fully watertight, airtight, your stuff inside is not going to get wet if it's rained. If you're like a lot of people and you leave your box in the bed of your pickup truck, um, you have some of these that aren't air sealed. You just leave it in the bed. It starts raining. You come back out of the you know out of out of the diner after having breakfast or what have you to go back out on the lake, and uh, all your tackle is just soaked. So to have a Heavier duty, sturdier, water and air tight containment unit for your storage is awesome. Awesome. So I like that. If you're a kayak angler, if you're a, a you know a glitter boat angler, you got yourself your fifty, sixty thousand dollar bass boat. Um, this is great in that they do stack, 
and as they're stacked, they do hold within one another, so um, they're less likely to, it helps if you don't have the cardboard Busby stick underneath it, let's do it without the tag in the way, there you go. So they do stack and they, they lock together, so they're not going to slide off, you know, rattling around. Um, See, having the tag under there kept it up. <laughs> so anyway, I'm hoping to use this. I'm not going to use this for my soft plastics. I'm strictly going to stick with these Busby uh, system for all of my hard baits, my crank baits, my jerk baits, my walking baits, um, you know, those kinds of things, treble hook stuff. As far as my soft plastics, that is going to empty out a ton of these old Planos, and I'll just use these for my soft plastics. That being said, over time, I'm certainly going to uh, most logically switch over to this or the Plano Edge systems for, for my soft plastics over time as these do eventually wear out, especially these individual dividers. Over time, everybody knows they start to bend, warp, soften, dis distort in shape, and then they don't lock in uh, nicely, neatly, and, and uh, as tightly as they should, and then you have those issues there. Uh, where baits again start traveling beyond the divider. Uh, the other thing with this style, with those individual slide-in dividers, as opposed to a locked box, a box that doesn't have a, a you know an opening, a gap between them, each individual uh, storage containment cube here. Once the item's in it, it has no place to go. You don't have the issue, and I've had this a thousand times, where a treble hook bait, the treble hook slides underneath this little divider, and you go to pull it out. And yes, I've been stuck in the thumb. I go to pull out, you know, for example, this little head and top water uh, pompadour. That little treble hook on the back is caught underneath the divider, right? You don't realize it in the storage, just the treble hook, just one side. You go to pull out the pompadour, and if you're unfortunate that this doesn't slide out, that holds in, you can end up with a treble hook in your finger as you're trying to pull out the pompadour, and now you're stuck to your tackle box. Um, on kayaks, on small boats, when you're in a rush in a tournament, that happens. With kids, that happens. And you don't want to put anybody at risk uh, for injury just before you've even cast it to catch your, your fish. I'm, I'm much more happy to catch a, a hook in my hand with a fish thrashing than I am uh, trying to get the bait to go get the fish. Um, that being said, I'm going to make this uh, basically like maybe a two or three part series. So this was just the reveal. A little bit of quick explanation. Um, another great thing about the Busby, they float. Again, going back to the fact that it does have an airtight, watertight seal, um, and the fact that there's so much of a footprint and there's so much plastic mass because of the thickness of these individual 1x3 bins, 1x1 um, bins, etc. The volume of plastic, the airtight seal containing air inside, um, and the watertight, not letting the water seep in, allows this to actually float. Again, something that I talked about previously when remarking about wanting to devise a better tackle system, a better tackle storage system. Um, a floating box that you can fill up with your tungsten weights on one side, your, you know, your baits on the other that the weights go to. You want to make, make an entire Carolina rig box set up uh, with your tungsten and lead and your, your beads and your, your hooks, and on top of that have your, you know, your Senko worms or your long uh, ribbon tails for, your, for throwing or your beaver baits or what have you that you're going to Carolina rig or Texas rig, and know that if you flip your kayak, you're not watching, you know, a couple of hundred bucks go down into the bottom of the lake that you'll never get. Not to mention destroying the, the ecosystem and the environment, because I'm a big proponent to not leave these kinds of things laying at the bottom of a river or at the bottom of a lake just because you have a mishap and you, you roll your kayak or your boat and it goes into distress and sinks. Um, the ability for this to float and be recoverable is, you know, important. Uh, all that being said, I'm probably going to take this, uh, these today, make up my boxes, consolidate and condense and make room for more of my soft plastics. Um, and I'm going to enjoy coming back maybe in six months or so uh, after the spring, maybe midsummer, and do a uh, case review again and see exactly how these line up. But the fact that these are a floating, durable, um, you know, heavy gauge plastic, same as the Bass Mafia, they have that lightweight Lexan clear that has the uh, 
um, UV protectant, and the plastic inside, these bins, as well as the case uh, molded plastic, are also have a, their own proprietary anti-rust restricting agent within them. So like Plano, like Flambo with their rust restrictor and the Flambos uh, and the other systems, um, this should also help uh, inhibit uh, rust, co uh, rust collection and rust creation on a lot of your baits. Still, with this system as airtight and watertight as it is, as the fact that these bins are not vented, there is no flow through of air, there is no flow into the box of air, I would not recommend putting wet lures directly back into this box. Yeah, I can understand a damp lure after you've let it dry, just ambient air, moisture, that's what this, I think, is best suited to pre prevent. But if I've been walking, if I've been walking this talk water spook here, uh, and, and I just cut it off and I go to change to another, I'm going to leave this on the deck to dry in the air. I'm going to leave this on a towel, and then I'm going to come back to it after it's dried off sufficiently before I place it into my box. But uh, all that being said, uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to leave the link to them. Uh, you know, it's buzzbee.com. They have their own website. This is their Colony 28 starter pack. Real quick, you're looking at Plano Edge. Plano Edge runs about $49.99 per box, okay? It's a, a leaps and bounds above many other uh, tackle uh, storage systems. This package that I got, which comes with four of these 3700 series size boxes with the dividers already inside, it came with two 3700 series boxes, completely barren, just empty, just the case. And then it came with a massive variety, you see, of extra storage boxes in their different sizes, one by ones, two by twos, uh, the two by two, four by four, uh, one by four, I should say. There's the one by ones. There's a six pack of these, a two pack of uh, the one by fours. And there's more than one of the one by fours. You've got a couple of boxes in here of the two by twos, two in each. Um, it adds up that you can actually fill those other empty ones if you wanted to maintain these, but you can use these to customize the ones that came with the uh, dividers and then take the ones you take out of here and throw them in the empties to do a different setup in those. All said, you're getting six cases and a series of divided boxes. It came to around $250. So if you do the math, $49.99 for one Plano Edge storage tackle box. It's about $42, $41 and some change for each one of these Busbies. So in the end, this comes out about $4 cheaper per box. Um, the only thing that you're, you're losing is you don't have, like I say, you don't have the, um, the, the ability to open it with one. Well, you still can open it with one hand, but you don't have a one latch opening. You have a, two individual latches. Uh, I've never actually tried to see if a Plano Edge would float, so I think I might try that. I might dunk it in the old water and see whether or not it floats, but I know for sure... Uh, from video evidence that these do, uh, even loaded down to bear. So I think cost-effectively getting the larger bulk po uh, packages, uh, you're going to end up saving a lot more money. Uh, again, the only critique that I have about these, uh, now that I have them in my possession, is the wall size, the, the lip on each one of these boxes. Um, I understand they would have had to basically make micro-module little hexes in here. It would be difficult to latch them in um, if they had shrunk this down. But I think if they shredded, if they made these boxes slightly longer and they shredded off these lips so that they were, you know, a few mil smaller, uh, you could probably get another divider in. Uh, you know, maybe not as wide, you know, you probably get another one of these dividers in here. Uh, probably looking at Let's see what we can do. That would go there. This lip goes on that. This lip hangs over top of that lip. Hangs over that lip. Hangs over top of this lip. And yeah, you're getting, I'll show you real quick. So if you rest the lips over top of each other, taking away the, the actual width of these lips, if you can see right there, there's a little bit of space. 
Nope, that went too far. One on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. And you get this little gap. So if those lips were taken, you would have had this little gap. You could have either made this box smaller than a 3700 um, or enlarged it slightly over and been able to uh, have another small divider in there or, you know, obviously I'm just taking the lips in account if you thinned out the walls as well as the lips themselves. Um, it probably would even add the extra one uh, slot. But that's neither here nor there. I'm very pleased with this design, and this design is based on rigidity and making it rugged and support weight and be able to be crushed by an F-350. <laughs> so, um, without any adverse effects. I hope you enjoyed. I'm looking forward to uh, testing this out over the next uh, few months um, and, uh, and see how well this has literally uh, decreased my tackle expansion and stored everything down smaller and allowed me to uh, make room for the tons and tons of soft plastics that come in every month from all my other tackle supply um, things. Like I said, I paid full price for this. They did have a sale going on, like I said, for this Colony 28 starter pack. And uh, I'll leave the links down in the, in the description. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and if you are looking to swap up for from your original, you know, Plano 3700 soft boxes, and you're on the on on the fence whether you're going to go with a Plano Edge, I just want to give you the advice: um, if you can go into a well, if you can go in and find somebody, if you go to a trade show and, or an expo, and you see them have a display of these, uh, give it a feel, look at it, you will be. In my impressions, you're going to be very surprised. They're extremely similar. Um, the design is there. There's, they, they're not, you're not going to have any transference of items because each one of these uh, little squares on the lid coincide with the openings in the boxes so that it seals the gap around the edges of the box so that things can't slide uh, between, um, between each uh, individual bin. Um, I'm happy. I'm going to get some use out of this. I hope this was entertaining. I hope it was a bit informative. There's a ton of these uh, videos out there already. Uh, I'm not the first to get this. But uh, I appreciate your time with me. As always, like, share, and subscribe, uh, if you haven't already, uh, to my channel. And I've got plenty of more videos, unboxings, and uh, future videos on the way. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's a ton of content coming. Uh, with that, as always, from me to you, all you hookaholics out there, tight lines, and I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace.